Angus Trim is an absolute legend in the sword community, renowned for his extensive knowledge and experience making swords that handle like a dream. Sonny Settles, along with his son Zach, a valiant armory produced swords with some of the best fit and finish in the production market. What happens when they get together to collaborate? Hello, this is Kyle, also known as AlienTube, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Vision Tower, the first of what will hopefully be a long line of collaborative swords. Let's talk about the background of this sword. Mr. Trim has been producing swords for several decades now, refining his designs as time passes. Unfortunately, age and health are catching up to him, and it seems that while he is still interested in producing new swords, he's also looking to pass on his knowledge and legacy. To that end, he sent one of his swords, an 18B.13, to Sunny at Valiant Armory. Mr. Suttles then replicated the blade to the best of his abilities, while also putting his own spin on the hilt. The result is the Vision line. The first two models, the Tauber that I'm reviewing today and the Strasbourg, are available now from both Age of Chivalry and Cult of Athena for $1,195 US dollars. I ordered this one from Age of Chivalry, along with the Scabbard from Valiant Armory for an additional $500. The sword the Tauber is based on, an Atrium 18B.13, is not a common one. A total of three have been made, one of which is firmly ensconced at Valiant Armory for this collaboration. Here's a picture of one of those, next to a picture of my Tauber. So, as the name implies, the 18B.13, and hence the Tauber, were inspired by swords of Oakshot Type 18B, which saw use from the mid-15th to early 16th centuries. They were cut-and-thrust balanced hand-and-a-half swords with a slender profile, ending in an acute tip that was usually reinforced. They had a strong central ridge to aid in stiffness for thrusting, and usually had either a flattened diamond or hollow ground cross-section. Keeping in mind that the Oakshot typology is more of a guideline than rules, to me the Tauber is something of a blend between an 18A and B. The traits that make it more similar to an 18B are the length and wasting of the grip, as well as the hexagonal cross-section near the crossguard. In favor of 18A are the not quite a slender profile, longer ogive curve towards the point, and the non-reinforced tip. But frankly, this is all splitting hairs, and it doesn't really matter if this sword could be classified as a type 18A or B were it a historical piece. I'll be breaking the review down into four parts, the scabbard, the hilt, the blade, and test cutting, and then I'll give my final thoughts. So starting with the scabbard, it was crafted by Zack at Valiant Armory and features a stunning oxblood color that's probably the best looking die job on any scabbard I own. It comes with a belt and suspension system, and for the life of me I could not figure out how to wear it properly even after watching multiple videos about how to use these things. It's probably just my failings here. That said, the belt is already showing quite a bit of wear from just me cinching it around the waist, which doesn't inspire confidence in the durability of the leather. The fit of the sword to the scabbard is decent, but could be better. While it mostly retains the sword, when holding it upside down, the sword will very slowly slide out. Also, there's quite a bit of rattle here. Moving on to the hilt, one of the interesting challenges Valiant Armory had with the Vision line was creating a hilt that would maintain the balance and handling that Aid Trims are known for, while still putting their own spin on things. Mr. Trim uses relatively simple fittings for his swords, and Valiant Armory typically uses a much wider variety. The grip is dyed an antiqued brown. The leather and cord wrap are done extraordinarily well. Everything is tight and the transitions are perfect. The shape of the grip is one of my favorite parts of this sword. There's just so much depth and dimension. First off, I love wasted grips. I think they both look and feel fantastic. Secondly, the cross section is close to a rounded octagonal, with so much attention to detail that it's stunning. Every moment handling this sword is a treat due to how comfortable the grip is. Needless to say, indexing the blade is a breeze. 
The Tauber features a scent stopper pommel that's extremely well made. The lines are all crisp, straight, and fashioned in a way that makes it incredibly comfortable to hold. To top it all off, it's finished in a beautiful antique style that is quite a sight. The peen is very clean as well. This is just an outstanding pommel. The crossguard echoes the grip and pommel with an octagonal shape with very crisp lines, and it's also finished in that antique style. There's some decorative grooves in the center that bring a touch of eye candy to it. At first glance, is a pretty simple guard. The gap where it meets the blade is almost not there. It looks worse in these pictures because the scabbard has left a little bit of sawdust there. I used some pressurized air and blew it out, and I'd say the gap is as small as you could reasonably expect. Overall, the hilt is premium. I think it takes the already excellent fit and finish of Valiant Armory's Craftsman line and takes it up a notch. That brings us to the business end, the blade. Here's the measurements I took of the Tauber. There aren't really any specs to compare them to. Valiant Armory doesn't even have a listing for these swords yet. One of the most interesting designs in this sword is the hexagonal cross-section near the guard. This brings the balance of the sword closer to the hilt and also aids in stiffness. Normally this type of sword would start thicker than the measured 6.8 millimeters, but the unusual cross-section lessens the need for it to be quite so thick. In any case, the distal taper is complex. Where the cross-section is hexagonal, the sword doesn't distally taper much at all. Then afterwards it rather quickly thins almost 2 millimeters before slowly tapering through the middle of the blade, again thinning rapidly near the tip. Unsurprisingly, this leads to a sword blade that is quite rigid through the first half to two-thirds, then flexes nicely at the sweet spot. Coinciding with the hexagonal section is a narrow ricasso. I don't often handle a long sword with my finger wrapped around the crossguard for more tip control, but it's nice to have a ricasso to ease that option if desired. The transition from the ricasso to the sharp edge is smooth and well done. The tip, as I mentioned earlier, is not reinforced like a typical 18B, but it's nicely formed and mostly even. It looks like it isn't 100% perfectly aligned with the central ridge, but this is a handmade sword, so expecting perfection is a fool's game, and we're talking about less than a millimeter here. I hesitated to even mention it, but I noticed the slight asymmetry, so I figured I should include it. I'm not bothered by it in the slightest. The central ridge on the Tauber is interesting. First off, the hexagonal section's edges waver a bit, but only in a very minor way. Once it transitions to a diamond cross section, the central ridge is perfectly straight, although the finish on the blade sometimes gives off the optical illusion that the ridge wavers. It's kind of an odd phenomenon, actually. The finish on the sword is a beautiful satin, with a few tool markings visible here and there. The apple seeded edge is noticeably finished slightly differently, but it's not a secondary bevel. Handling-wise, oh boy is this sword a treat. It's balanced at 3.5 inches, around 9 centimeters, and it feels perfect. Light, easy to swing, with just enough blade presence to maintain good tip control while also having authority in the cut. When I want to pick up a sword that's not my wooden waster to practice forms and positions, this is the one I want to grab. As I mentioned previously, atriums are renowned for their superb handling, and I'm happy to confirm that my Vision Tauber duplicates that. One area that this is unlike an atrium is the edge. Mr. Trim's swords come very sharp, but with a pronounced secondary bevel. It doesn't negatively affect the cutting performance of his swords, and isn't necessarily ahistorical, but secondary bevels are often the sign of a poorly sharpened sword. And that's obviously not the case with an atrium, but I definitely do prefer when a sword has a smooth grind all the way to the edge. Happily, the Tauber features that excellent geometry. The Valiant Armory swords I've handled have all had excellent sharpness, a touch sharper than the Albions I have experience with, and that's true of this one as well. Which brings me to test cutting, and I'm going to let the footage speak for itself. 
Please keep in mind that I'm a novice at using swords. So now it's time to talk bottom line. Was the Tauber worth the approximately 1200 US dollar price tag? I'm going to say not only yes, but hell yes. In fact, I think it's currently underpriced. It's not far off what a Valiant Armory Craftsman sword costs, with better fit and finish. Comparing the Tauber to Albion's 18B offerings, it's over $100 cheaper than their least expensive version of the Earl. And the Tauber has some nice features, such as antiquing on the hilt furniture, which normally adds to the cost. I think it's currently an absolute steal at this price point, and I fully expect future vision swords to cost more. In fact, the next model appears to be $100 pricier. I'm not quite as sanguine about the scabbard, however. While it's absolutely gorgeous, the fit could be better, and I have some concerns about the durability of the belt. Now don't get me wrong, it's a good scabbard, but for the $500 it added to the total, I think I'd rather commission a scabbard from Steven Huerta. I'm excited to see what other models are coming for the Vision line. As I was working on this review, Mr. Trim teased some pictures of a 16A model, and I might have to break my budget to figure out how to afford one, as I've wanted a chance to handle one of his legendary 16A swords for a while now. But anyway, that's going to wrap up this review. Thank you for watching, and until next time, Alien 2 out.